I like to talk a lot about the moats that we have with Tesla. And there is a huge moat that I think has gone undiscovered or at least untalked about. And I got Warren Redlick on here today to talk about that because Warren loves to talk about moats too. So we're going to be talking about one of the fundamental reasons why it's going to be impossible to catch Tesla for almost all of the product categories that they're involved in. So I hope you'll enjoy uh, the show today. If you do like having Warren, Warren on the show, please hit like, because that'll help me know that I should bring him back more often. And then hit our Patreons. That's information below for the Patreons. And then, uh, of course, subscribe and, uh, and get notified of more programs like this that'll be coming along. Let's jump right on in and talk to Warren Redlick. Um, so this is a, a theory of mine. I'm just going to throw it out to see what you think of my theory. And because you, you generally have your own theories and, and maybe you already have this anyway. So we have a situation with Tesla where they have all these S curves that they're on energy S curve, robo taxi S curve, uh, full self-driving S curve, electric car S curve, electric car, wow. 30,000, 30, 000, 30 000, bot S curve, all these different S curves that they're potentially on. And basically my argument would be that the competition for every single thing that they're doing basically is probably 20, 30 plus. In other words, they're, they're, that, they're seven years behind that there's not only seven years behind, but that if any of them started today, I remember an argument you made a long time ago about the cost of getting into business. Who can possibly afford to get into the space the space business with Tesla with this lead? The problem is less with their other businesses than it is with space, but it's not that much less. And so if you get into the business today, though, Tesla is going to be making, they have capacity right now, already in place or nearly in place. If you count Mexico, maybe for 10 million vehicles. Just actual plans, actual purchased property, actual buildings being constructed, actual permits, yes. actual government relations. They got at least 10 million vehicle capacity in the theoretical capacity for the five for the five vehicle factories. Yes, including Mexico. in three to four years, in three to four years, if they never make another factory. Call it four years. OK, yeah, OK. Nobody else could, except for BYD, maybe. Nobody else can come close. If they if they went pedal to the metal tomorrow, they couldn't come close. Yeah, put it this way. If you were going to build a gigafactory for another company, let's say Tesla spends $5 billion in total building a gigafactory. Right. The other company is going to spend 10. Right. Because they don't have the efficiencies in building factories that Tesla has. And they're going to take longer to ramp and they might not ramp to the full scale. There's, I put it as there's a first mover advantage. Like I yeah. think Starlink is the best example of the first mover advantage. Starlink is going up before anybody gets any meaningful number of satellites up. Starlink is going to have 10,000 satellites up and maybe 40,000 satellites up. Maybe. Yeah. And their cost of launching the satellites is less than everyone else's because SpaceX owns right starlink so they they're, they're they're not taking a margin on their launches they're doing some internal accounting for it so now you're some other company and you want to launch a satellite network to compete with spacex well your cost of deploying your network is going to be higher than spacex's cost of launching its network and they're already going to have the customers so you would have to launch and then sell a service for less or you're not going to have better quality. So you're going to undercut them in price, but you can't undercut them in price because they can always lower their price. So does it make sense to invest $50 billion to build out a satellite network when the return on investment is probably not going to be there? Right. Now, I see in some of these other categories that you don't have quite, again, quite the cost and quite the advantage that SpaceX has and, and Starlink has. So we'll look at, let's say, energy. We were talking about energy storage on another one of our vi videos the other day. People should go back and look at that. Um, so on energy storage, as you pointed out, you have people that make batteries. It's not that complicated to make a container to put the batteries in. But the S-curve is going to get dramatic here because 
there's so the TAM is as Elon says the TAM is unlimited. It's 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 almost unlimited. So I believe that BYD and CATL, if they decide to 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 ramp up, and some of these other companies that will be making energy storage systems, will make a reasonably good product at a reasonably good price. And when they can't get it from Tesla, some of these in, some of these people will buy from these other companies and they'll do okay. But yeah. in terms but in terms of being in the lead by any stretch of the imagination, in terms of being uh having the highest market share, there's like at this point, even at this early point in the game with with uh, Tesla only having Lathrop, they can cookie cutter Lathrop now and nobody can catch them for years and years and years just in factory capacity. That's kind of my theory. Yeah, actually, I think they announced Shanghai to be the same capacity as Lathrop. And I'm thinking, there's no way the guys in Shanghai are going to be satisfied with that. They're going to double Lathrop. <laughs> yeah. No way. Yeah, um, yeah I think the, the, the I think the big example where it's open question whether they'll maintain the lead or whether the lead will erode quickly is the self-driving. Mm. You need a lot of data and you need a lot of compute and you need better models. So they're developing pretty good models. They get, they're getting the computers getting faster and they're generating a lot more data. Nobody else is generating data in the same way that Tesla is. Right. That that's a pretty big hurdle. You've got to get millions of cars out there. Each car has to have eight cameras on it or in that ballpark. It needs to have a computer to process all that data. You need to have infrastructure in your home office to take in that data and uh, and and deal with it. And it seems like. You know, I, I don't see anybody even starting down that path t today. And Tesla now has 4 million cars on the road, probably close to 4 million of them have the camera system and the chips. Right. You know, that now the other side of that is as AI improves, as AI technology improves, the models improve. It may be that somebody figures out a way to learn driving quicker. On, on less data right it, it may but it still seems like that's five years behind tesla unless there's some miracle so so then if that's true and we have all these categories where i think it's true i don't care whether all you know cars alone uh, there's no way i mean their their installed capacity nobody's even nobody's even planning for that installed capacity nobody's even got that that roadmap except right. maybe byd so if that's true, does that mean on a lot of these things that eventually these people will be forced to license? Uh, license tech, license software. I license think it's software. more likely that we're going to see bankruptcies in legacy auto companies and some com competitive, you know, EV startups. I think Lucid Motors you know, the writing's on the wall for Lucid Motors. Rivian has a shot at surviving. I don't know anybody else. You know, Neo in China, maybe. BYD has a good sort of conglomerate status, maybe. Hyundai Kia might survive. Um, Geely and Geely. Uh, I don't know enough about them. I can't comment on them. Um, I think there's, a you know, but what what are they licensing? What are these other companies? Are they licensing FSD or are they licensing something else? They'd be licensing FSD. They might be licensed. They might be either licensing or buying uh, things like uh, the uh, the capability to do the the. Um, okay. So here's the problem the with the other, here's the problem with the other companies licensing FSD. If Tesla is both the dominant player in self-driving software, hardware and software, and the dominant player at manufacturing vehicles that operate at a low cost per passenger, per, per mile, low cost per mile. Mm -hmm. So in other words, you make a Ford F-150 Lightning that costs 40 cents a mile to operate versus Cybertruck at 15 cents a mile to operate. Yeah, you can put FSD on the F-150 Lightning, but no one's gonna wanna buy the F-150 Lightning because they save a lot more money by buying a Cybertruck. So it's really, I don't know what, scenario is out there where somebody gets a vehicle and is able to make it operate at such a low cost. I mean, Hyundai's Ionic 6 looks promising. Maybe that gets there, but do they have cameras in it? Not yet. 
I don't know if they had eight cameras in it. Do they have, they don't, you'd have to get the FSD hardware wired to, wired into your vehicle. That's going to take a year plus to get that lined up. Yeah. I, the, I think the question becomes just, just like with vehicles themselves, we know Tesla can't do it all. They just can't. And they don't even have a plan to do it all. And Elon has said, please, competition, do it. So, and I believe that on the other side of the coin, you have people right now that are buying Volkswagens or, or you know, t take the brand. They're buying them because that's what they've always bought. They believe in the company. Uh, they have brand, uh, brand loyalty. They like the look of it better. There's all these other reasons that people buy things, including it's available. Um, yeah. and, I, and the other one isn't available. Uh, so the people are continue to have this large list of ways that they make these buying decisions. And uh, the other car companies and new car company startups are going to be smart enough to find niches and places where they can sell product. But at some point, everybody's going to want F FSD. I mean, everybody's going to want their car to drive itself. Even if yeah. they don't want it to be a robo taxi, they're going to want it to drive itself. Yeah. Um, and to your point, where unless unless AI comes up with something really amazing that allows them to put the cameras in one day and drive it the next day uh, or the next year at least, I don't see how anybody ever catches. So yeah, I mean, you know, somebody has to make somebody has to make a million cars and put cameras on them and put inference chips in them and build a data center. Yes. For a year or two or three, yeah. <laughs> when they could possibly, you know, Tesla inside for you know X number of dollars a mile, yeah, or X number of dollars of a year or whatever. I mean, I just I would see that these people will eventually just say give up. They're going to have to give up uh, and say we we're going to have to have this. Now they may wait until there's really an FSD that you can drive from the back seat, but at some point after that happens, I. I I have to think there's going to be a licensing. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, th that exhausts all of my uh, stuff for today, Warren. So this week we've had four shows already with Warren Redlick and we aren't done yet. I've invited Warren to come back on after earnings. Probably we'll shoot that on Thursday and maybe it'll be on Friday. Anyway, hit the, the, uh, uh, subscribe button and then hit notify if you'd like to be notified about that. But I'll I'll put it up uh, as soon as I know which day I'm going to do that. I certainly will put that information on this information below on the YouTube video. And then, uh, you know, if you uh, have enjoyed listening, uh, uh, hit, hit subscribe anyway. And then both of us have Patreon. Both of us could use the support because it does, you know, it's a lot of work to put these channels, put these YouTube shows on. So, if you wouldn't mind, one or, one or both of us, uh, maybe five bucks a month, 10 bucks a month, it'd be so much help. Well, anyway, it's been great talking to you today. Click the link below to get your paperback, Kindle or audiobook now.